As climate scientists have known and reported since the 1970s, a warmer Earth is a wetter Earth. Warming the planet causes increased evaporation. The water evaporated into the atmosphere soon comes back to Earth in the form of precipitation. Because there is more energy in the planetary system as a result of planetary warming, the resulting precipitation events often appear as heavy rain. In other words, we have known for about 50 years that warming our only home has consequences that include more and heavier rainfall. An article at phys.org on December 10, 2024 describes one of the adverse consequences of planetary warming leading to increased heavy precipitation. The article is titled, Heavy rains deliver largest amounts of fertilizer-derived nitrogen to the Gulf of Mexico, study finds. Here's the expansive lead, quote, As opposed to a constant flow from sources above and below ground, periods of heavy rain and runoff deliver the greatest amounts of fertilizer-derived nitrogen through creeks, rivers, and storm drains into the northern Gulf of Mexico, a team of scientists led by Boston College researchers reports in the journal Communications, Earth, and Environment, end quote. I will comment further on this peer-reviewed open access paper shortly. According to the lead author of the peer-reviewed paper, quote, the northern Gulf of Mexico faces significant environmental challenges, including nutrient overloading, harmful algal blooms, and oxygen-depleted dead zones, end quote. This author of the peer-reviewed paper indicated the means by which nitrogen is delivered to the Gulf of Mexico. This knowledge could be used to protect the northern Gulf of Mexico. According to the article at phys.org, the Gulf of Mexico is fed by 33 major rivers that drain water from 31 states and two Canadian provinces. As a result, the Gulf of Mexico is influenced by the actions of people throughout much of North America. The peer-reviewed paper relied on analysis of isotopes. I have conducted considerable research using different isotopes, especially early in my career. However, most people are unfamiliar with isotopic analyses. As a result, I will strive for clarity. Nitrogen is comprised of different isotopes, including the stable isotopes of nitrogen-14 and nitrogen-15. Different sources of nitrogen often exhibit different ratios of these two isotopes, which allows for the ability to trace and characterize these sources. For example, the application of fertilizer produces lower nitrogen isotope ratios than ratios found in unfertilized areas. As a result, the ratio of in nitrogen-14 to nitrogen-15 indicates whether water used by plants came from recent precipitation or extraction of groundwater. In this case, the higher ratio of nitrogen-14 to nitrogen-15 during the wet season indicates that recent rainfall served as the source of water for plants. In contrast, samples collected during the dry season demonstrated that groundwater nitrogen dominates during this period. One of the authors of the peer-reviewed paper said, quote, we were somewhat surprised to observe such a significant shift in anthropogenic nitrogen sources between the dry and wet seasons, which had not been identified in previous studies. End quote. The findings underscore the critical role of hydrology in driving nitrogen pollution in the Gulf of Mexico. According to the lead author of the peer reviewed paper, quote, with climate change predicted to increase the frequency of extreme precipitation events, the transport of fertilizer-derived nitrogen into the Gulf of is likely to intensify, further exacerbating hypoxic conditions, end quote. Hypoxia refers to limited nitrogen, which disrupts function of organisms. The peer-reviewed open access paper was written by 11 scholars and published on December 10, 2024. It is titled, Isotopic Evidence for Preferential Transport of Fertilizer Nitrogen into the Northern Gulf of Mexico During High Water Discharge, published in Communications, Earth, and Environment, part of the renowned Nature series of peer-reviewed journals, the abstract provides an excellent overview of the paper and its results. Quote, Anthropogenic nitrogen inputs from the Mississippi Atchafalaya River Basin have caused substantial environmental challenges in the northern Gulf of Mexico, such as coastal eutrophication, harmful algal blooms, and seasonal hypoxia. Addressing these issues requires a better understanding of the complex sources of nitrogen, 
which include fertilizers, groundwater, manure, and sewage. In this study, we analyzed the nitrogen isotopic composition of dissolved nitrate and particulate nitrogen from the Wax Lake Delta, a major distributary of the Mississippi Atchafalaya River Basin that flows into the Gulf of Mexico. Our findings revealed that during the wet season, Delta 15 in values of both nitrate and particulate nitrogen were consistently two to three parts per thousand lower compared to the dry season. This suggests that fertilizer-driven nitrogen, which has lower Delta 15 in, is predominantly exported to the Gulf of Mexico through periods of high water discharge. These findings imply that adjusting fertilizer application timing could help reduce nitrogen loading and mitigate its environmental impact on the Gulf of Mexico. End quote. The introduction of the peer-reviewed paper cites abundant peer-reviewed literature in providing a compelling overview of the importance of this issue. Quote, the Mississippi Atchafalaya River Basin is the largest river basin in North America, accounting for approximately 80% of freshwater discharge and around 90% of total riverine nitrogen input to the northern Gulf of Mexico. This region is a major agricultural hub characterized by intensive cultivation and large amount of nitrogen fertilizer application. Since 1950, the total nitrogen load from the Mississippi Atchafalaya River system into the Gulf of Mexico has increased substantially, peaking in 1993 with fluctuating trends thereafter. This escalation in nitrogen input has negatively impacted phytoplankton community composition and the extent of hypoxic zones in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Despite decades of efforts to mitigate nitrogen loading, hypoxia areas in the northern Gulf of Mexico continue to exceed the target set by the Hypoxia Task Force, which aims to reduce the five-year average size of hypoxic zone to less than 5,000 kilometers squared by 2035. Current observations indicate that the size of these zones is roughly three times the target, significantly affecting marine ecosystems, coastal communities, and economies dependent on the northern Gulf of Mexico. End quote. Never mind the optimism associated with the 2035 figure. Instead, I encourage you to focus on the, quote, approximately 80% of freshwater discharge and around 90% of total riverine nitrogen input to the northern Gulf of Mexico. This region is a major agricultural hub. This escalation in nitrogen input has negatively impacted phytoplankton community composition and the extent of hypoxic zones in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Despite decades of efforts to mitigate nitrogen loading, hypoxia areas in the northern Gulf of Mexico continue to exceed the target set by the Hypoxia Task Force. The Gulf of Mexico is important for many reasons, including serving as home to many species of fish, wildlife, and coral. It serves as a nursery for marine life. It has tremendous economic and cultural value. It connects to the Gulf Stream, which moves warm water from the Gulf into the North Atlantic. In so doing, it moderates temperatures along the east coast of North America and the coasts of Western Europe and Northwestern Africa. Not surprisingly, the collective actions of humans are producing negative impacts on this important region. As usual, I wish I had better news.